feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. Hi, me and welcome. If you are new to my channel, I'm so happy to have you. If you're my previous subscribers, welcome back. So for today's video, we're going to talk about a multitude of things from uh, internet blackouts to solar flares and solar storm, including the poles reversal. So um, just quickly before we do begin, this video is being recorded on April 5th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just to show you a little bit of proof that I am indeed recording on that time period right now. This is the current news as of today. Just so to kind of scroll it up, so you guys are aware of what is on the news. So you can clearly see that today is indeed April 5th, okay? Uh, if you want to book a reading with me, just check the description below. I do have some sales right now. I have a 10% off 30-minute personal reading. So if you're interested in that, just check the description. And here are some disclaimers on your screen right now. Feel free to read them at your own time or, you know, pause the video if you like to. You, you don't, don't worry about it. This video is just for entertainment purposes only and for education purposes only as well. And here are some other disclaimers on your screen as well. So now quickly before we do begin, I just want to quickly say that everything in this video is going to be timestamped in the description below. And if you have watched my French presidential election. Thank you for watching. If for those of you who have not, go check it out. It's really good. I promise you, it's totally worth it. Because whoever becomes president in France is going to determine the rest of our future when it comes to World War Three and nuclear war. So it's very important that you watch it. But in anyway, besides that, let's begin, shall we? And yes, I know a lot of you guys are probably going to say, "Oh, Chris, you wore that shit last time." Yes, I only wore it like what for an hour, so it does not really matter. But anyway, besides the point, let's jump in, shall we? So, if you're not fam familiar with solar storms, solar storms and solar flares are like almost like weather patterns, like weather changes that normally happen on our Earth. But just imagine that on the sun. And so, oftentimes, they're not, you know, uh, you know how sometimes they have cartoon depictions, like in a volcanic activity, there's magma that shoots out. It's kind of the same thing, right? And now all of you guys are familiar, at least some of you guys are familiar and know that the sun is the combustion of ball of energy, right? And so when there's too much energy, it bursts, right? Just like, um, you know, you put oil in a pan, when it gets too hot, it's going to start to bubble and sometimes it's going to splatter. The same exact thing, right? So solar flares on a large scale are basically like oil that's been heated up and it is bursting. But right? it's breaking that normal barrier because it's being heated up on the inside, so therefore it's uh, spilling out on the outside. And so when a uh, solar storm by categorization basically means a combustion of energy that is expulsed from the sun that normally heads towards the universe. And sometimes it oftentimes goes in a direct way where the Earth is in the way of it, which can actually um, be very detrimental, but also could be very positive. We're going to talk about both of them today. So I can see here, it's the energy you can kind of see from this first picture here, you kind of see the energy just being expelled down. In this second photo here, you see the energy being pulled away from the sun and it's starting to, as it starts to get away from the sun, it's going to start to enter some other planet, uh, lesser magnetic field, right? So here it is. So this is a close-up picture of what's going on there. So if you're not quite too familiar, this is what, we're referring to. So oftentimes than now, a lot of people don't understand how solar storms really work, and I think this graphic that I'm going to show you is going to help you understand it a little bit better. So how solar flares is disrupt technology on Earth? So we have hot gas that's full of charged particles. It's hurled from the sun. Two, the sun flares. The solar flares fire through space at nearly 200,000 miles per second. Three particles Batter uh, Earth, okay. Basically, it just enters Earth's electromagnetic field. I don't know why they use that terminology. Number four, changes to the Earth's field cause power, power jumps and failures in the electrical grid. So now, a lot of you guys may have been recently experiencing, and maybe if you had a trip that goes somewhere or wherever it is recently this week, 
A lot of what's going on right now um, is shut down. Airlines will be shut off. That's all directly related to the solar storm that are coming up at a faster and faster rate. As we start to get increased more into the ascension process, we're going to explain climate change, not only on um, a global catastrophe when it comes to humanity changes, but also on a a universal level where it's coming from the galaxy. So we're going to start to have not only um, geomagnetic storm, but we're also going to have a large celestial storm that's going to take way and make a way back into our world. And so we're going to understand how some animals went extinct, but we could not prove it because there was no evidence or the experience that we have ever witnessed before. So we're going to start to experience that as time goes on. Uh, what also is really amazing about the solar storm, though, it may have something to do with our ascension process and how that allows us to extend to the higher realm, especially when it comes to Earth 3D. So we're going to talk about that as well. Um, part of the thing is, this is amazing, this is um, the Northern Lights here. When, it, when there's a combustion of energy that enters into Earth's electromagnetic field, it makes Northern Lights. Or is what they really are, right? And so really think about it. When you see a person, they're basically a walking aura, right? You can see the color, you can see everything. It's, you have that ability. Uh, all of us have it. But when there's a lesser magnetic field that enters, it electrically charges those auras and they come forward. So potentially you're going to start to see more people glow the way that you've never seen before, right? And even so, it's so possible that with this electrical magnetic charge, areas, let's say, like Miami-Dade in Florida, who is not clearly in the north, will start to experience the northern lights, which is really cool because that's what happened when there's a large combustion of energy that electrically charged at the magnetic field, and it formulates auras around the world. So it's actually a quite beautiful phenomenon, to say the least. Although it has that, uh, environmental effects, there are also positivity that comes out of them. We also want to talk about in today's video is how, you know, uh, the energy with the high function of energy that heads towards Earth, it allows us to reach that ascension process, that level that is needed for us to extend to the higher realm. And once you start to receive that, you're going to start to be able to divide the physical and the spiritual astral body away from the vehicle body as you no longer are required to have that. So we're going to talk about it as well. And then lastly, we are going to talk about what God means. As God and by definition, when I ask my spirit guide, why did God exist? Or what does it really mean? What does the word God mean? And it gave me a message. And I'll say that to the end of the video. And that will be our opening um, scene in our next couple of videos or potentially whenever that video gets released. But it's going to be released soon. And then after that, at the end of April, we're going to start talking about the history of the universe and how we all was created. So it's going to be quite fun. All right. Anyway. Now that you understand everything, you got some background no, background understanding of everything that I spoke about today, let's just jump into it, shall we? Again, everything is timestamped in the description below. <laughs> okay, what kind of effect does a solar storm or solar flare have on our planet and our daily lives? So let's just take a look using our traditional right of way. Spirits and angels tell you, what kind of effects will solar storms or solar flares have on our planet and our daily lives? What kind of effects will it have on our daily lives? Okay. <clears throat> ah, okay. Well, this is a spiritual thing that's going on right now. That's just the part of spirituality here. So the first card that comes up here is we have the Nine of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles in this aspect is unlucky, unfortunate, right? We've been cursed as humanity. We've been cursed. On the left side here, we have the religious aspect, the religion. What effects will the solar storm or solar flares have on our planet and our daily lives? Government. Religion. Any sort of institution that based and foundation on a lack of proper understanding about our real world, or even better yet, lies about our current reality, our world as it is. Because, you know, what's really interesting, if you look at this guy here, not only the institution, if you look at this guy who's holding this wand, it looks like an energetic switch. It looks like a power grid. 
right? And so really what this is, one of the major effects that we're going to witness is it going to bring down institutions. Metaphorically speaking, institutions like, you know, electrical grid and how we do the internet and all those type of things, it's going to bring that down. But it's also going to bring down every institution that had lied to people because those no longer vibrate at this sort of rate, which is why it's referred to in the, in the card here is in the past. It's not in the future, it's in the past. Right, that's why. So it's going to be, it's going to bring about an end to religion. It's going to bring about an end to uh, governments. It's going to bring about an end to a lot of things, even the end of um, very low energetic vibrational technology. Under these two cards here, we have is the four of wands here, right? People are going to start to feel what it means to be free. So there's going to be no limitation anymore. There's no restriction. It's just freedom. It's what it feels like. But also as well, our mindset is going to shift. So you know how like somebody who's very suicidal or somebody who's a serial killer or a mass murderer or stuff like that? Those things are going to start to be more understood and they're going to be able to find cures for that. And some of the cures are not electrical shock or impulses, but energetic surrounding that dictate it. So they're going to start to understand that a lot of these things are just based on energy and they're just responding to the energy that's around them. So that's what's really awesome about this uh, ten of swords here. It's the mental concept and it's the energetic, empathic feeling that they feel around, around energy. So they're just respond to, responding to it. Underneath the nine of pentacles, which is reversed here, we also have the reverse tempest card. We're going to start to take a holistic approach rather than a normal uh, medicine, chemical content, trying to kill as many people as possible, try to, try to make sure they're really sick so that we can maintain a business. That mentality, that idea in their head is going to come to an end. So it's going to start to become more holistic. I would not be surprised if we start to adopt, once again, Chinese holistic approaches when it comes to medical science. So that is something that's going to be part of the future. However, there will be some things from our current world, from our current reality, from our current medical system that's going to say, put like surgery, for example, those things are here to say, where something like medical treatment through pills or whatever, it's all going to dissipate. Uh, just more natural remedies that are not harmful for the universe, but also not harmful for your body as well. We also have here, what this is also going to do is for some people, this is going to be a temporary experience. For some of you guys, it's going to be a permanent experience. When the electrical power grid goes down and all the veil, you know, the electrically charged impulses, electrically charged our genetic me our magnetic field, our, you know, Earth, less or magnetic field. What I've seen here is that the veil is going to start to open, which means that you will not be able to see the dead. So a lot of you guys will start to realize that, oh, am I a medium? Am I seeing things? Am I schizophrenic? But really, in reality, you're not schizophrenic. You're able to have that temporary moment where you're able to communicate with people, loved ones that have sadly passed away. But now you have the luxury of having brand new memories or experiences with them just by trying to talk to them through the veil because you are able to do that because it's almost like that they never left, right? That is why the 10 of pentacles comes here. It's generations, right? Including animals. You're going to be able to talk to animals. That's just really cool about it as well. Um, I don't see there's going to be some sort of restriction anymore. As we start to extend, you're going to be able to start to understand that the veil is what allowed us to become who we are, to be able to undergo what we're feeling. But once the veil is lifted, the curtain is gone, you realize that they've always been right in front of you all along. You just couldn't see because the energy from them was so high vibrational that it just didn't match your vibration so you couldn't see it, right? doesn't mean they don't exist. which means you can't see it because, you know, when, for example, I did this in another video. If you want to watch it, I did um the Grandmother Grandson Paradox. Highly recommend you watch it. I kind of explain how this is, but in further in depth, how it works. This, right? This is not an object. This is a crystal. It's a self tonight, right? For me to hold this, lick it, touch it, whatever, it's energy, right? Energy. When energy is vibrating at the same rate, it becomes a solid object. 
when it when it vibrates at a higher rate, it becomes liquefied. Think about it like as oil. You put oil in a pan, you heat it up. It becomes from a liquid state to a hot state where it's starting to be molded. And then when it's cooled down, it becomes a solidified state. The same dark thing. So when somebody who passes away starts to liquefy and they start to get hot, heated up, they are at a higher vibrational state. So you can't see them because your brain can't piece them together because they're at a higher vibrational way. But when the veil is lifted and you raise your vibration, you're going to be able to see that solidified object, but it's really not solidified because now you have higher vibration, which means that you are dead to everybody else, but to, have, to the people who you really want to see, are going to, you're going to be alive, but you're really dead. So in order for extension, nobody really tells you that but when you extend, you will end up, you end up dying. You have to die first to extend. For example, you know, one of the most important things that people don't understand is that when you start to look for your soul purpose or your purpose in life, you don't oftentimes find it until after you de- after you die. Right? You don't find what that is. You don't find your purpose until after you die. So I'm gonna use the guy from Black Lives Matter. Um, I don't remember his name, it's not coming to me, but you probably all know who he is, the one where his knee was on his neck and he unfortunately died. Uh, the reason why I use this example is because everybody is familiar with what happened and it was a very momental, um, momentous time. So for that, uh, when um, his neck was being choked, he didn't realize his purpose was not to do like basketball or stuff. It helped him, but his real purpose was to spark change. That was his purpose, right? To spark conversation, talks, movement, changes, right? So sometimes... You don't understand your purpose until after you are gone. That's when you really make the most change. The same thing when somebody says, "Oh, I don't understand why my prayer, my uh, energy, my, you know, my belief, my manifestations don't work." Sometimes those manifestations take time. Sometimes they don't manifest themselves until after you die because they need to be released into the universe. And when it's released into the universe, the universe says, "You shall receive," right? That's how it really is. And, you know, one thing is, though, when you die, it's all not like the way the Bible or other religions can tell you. But I have seen, based on experience here, that everybody dies differently. And it's all based on a multitude of different things. I'm going to make a video on how you die and how those different possibilities and the 100 different types of the way that you could die. And I'm not physically saying that, like, Die like, oh, you get murdered. No, I'm not saying like that. I'm saying like in terms of how what you may witness beyond the veil when you pass away spiritually speaking. Doesn't mean like a lot of you guys may not go into life. Some of you guys may just enter a new lifestyle and just without, you know, transitioning. And other people, they just might become an angel. There are a multitude of different things. So I'll be talking about that on my channel. But right now, I just want to help you understand that a little bit. How did solar storms or flares affect our technology and what power could it do? So let's take a look. The best way to really explain and be able to understand what is going on, we need to use the energy oracle card, right? We're talking about the solar flares and technology and the power itself, the electrical grid. Will we ever experience a worldwide blackout? If so, how long? So we're going to talk about that right now. How does a solar storm or solar flare affect our technology and what power could it do? How does a solar storm or solar flare affect our technology spirit? And what power could it do? Okay. <clears throat> ah, beautiful. Okay, so we have the there's all of us. So we have the angel of strength. We have seven chakra archangel Uriel, who that's you by the way I did bring in t- into these reading. Soul contract the world. Okay. 
So you know how it's that everything that's going on with the solar storm, everything that's environmentally, when there's more energy being conversed out into our physical reality, it's all because of the spiritual world, world and what we're going through. That's what we're witnessing now. So I'm going to kind of go through it right now. So we have here, we have the angel of strength, right? This card is reverse. But we're asking, what, how does a solar storm or a solar flare affect our technology and what power it could it do? Well, the first thing is, automatically you will say it's weakened, which is, in essence, very true. It will weaken. But it will also, in a way, strengthen people. It will strengthen crystals. So, for example, you put this outside, it will strengthen the crystal, giving it power that it normally never gets from the sun or the moon or whatever method you use. It will automatically cleanse every crystal on Earth, but it will also electrically charge them. So, in a way, technology, like my computer that I'm filming this on, is made with clear quartz. And clear quartz is one of the reasons why we have computers, because a lot of our technology today is built and charged with clear quartz. But remember what happened. When you have too much of something, what happened? It explodes, it breaks, and stuff like that. So sometimes the crystal cannot handle a certain amount of energy, and it breaks or explodes. Right? That's why they tell you all the time to tell your computer or your device or your iPhone that you love them. Could do to your crystal that you are referring to. When your crystal realize and pick up on that love, that you know genuine genuinity, it is able to decrease the chance of the phone breaking or destroying. It can't pick up and absorb energy. So what you want to do is you want to clear that. For some crystals, they like this energy that comes. For other crystals, they're not so much. It really depends. You got to really know your crystal. So one of the things is the technology. I do see in some cases, technology are going to explode. And by that, that could mean a literal stunt could explode into brand new, better technology. It could also mean as well that technology gets destroyed because of the energy combustion and is absorbing too much of it. Right, so there's a multitude of different things. I do also see as well some may not be able to fudge you properly. I see blackouts. I see a little bit of explosion, battery compartments exploding, and stuff like that. As for this, we have Archangel Michael. Oh, excuse me, who is all about the seventh chakra, right? The seventh chakra, if you're not familiar, is by asking. Let me just bring this right back out. But actually, automatically is is here. We have here, we have the uh, the solar, pla- the solar plexus, no, excuse me, the root chakra, the solar sacral, the solar plexus, heart, and throat, third eye, and then your crown, right? You see the higher part here on the top where it has that purple and it's coming out away from the throat and the third eye? If you're not familiar, you don't know what the crown chakra is, it symbolizes understanding. It symbolizes your understanding. You are understanding your connection to the universe, or knowing that you are more than just a physical being, right? And so the seven chakra here, I seen earlier, is knowledge, wisdom. Look what she's holding, book, right? So a lot of us are going to receive messages during this time that's very important that's going to allow us to our ascension process. So for some of you guys, you're going to have dreams, visitation, you know, you know, vision, they're going to have a lot more of those, and they're going to become more frequent. What you're also going to receive as well is that one of the other side effects of this is going to allow you to pick up a book. Because, to say, for example, we talked about technology being down and getting destroyed, it's going to force you to pick up a book. And because of that, you're going to gain unknown wisdom that you have never gotten before. And that's what's going to be really important for humanity. So it's going to be one of the very important aspects of it. We're also going to gain a higher sense of understanding, right? Underneath the strength card here, we have the soul contract, right? A lot of you guys are probably in a state of fear. I'm not, again, trying to fear among you. and not trying to get you in a state of fear. I'm bringing awareness to you, right? And this is why the soul contract come up. The soul contract is talking about, in a literal sense, now, some of you guys signed up to be in this moment. You signed up to be here right now. You signed up to be here. It's witnessed one of the most phenomenal, one of the most unseen phenomena that have not occurred in almost years, centuries, thousands of years, millions of years, right? You are here for a reason, right? So when you ask yourself and ask your guys, why am I here? You're here because of your soul contract. But some of you guys, you don't. Some of you guys are making... This whole contract. Some of you guys will be dying when this is occurring. Some of you guys may pass away. 
Right? That's why I said you're going to see, so some of you guys are going to start to see the veil. Some of you guys are going to be able to witness, but in order for you to do that, you need to pass through the veil. You need to be able to die here so you can descend there. Right? That is something that no one ever tells you, that they, they think that somehow the physical body will go with you, but really the physical body stays here. Right? Just say you were to lose, lose your child. Let's say you were a turtle. Not a turtle. A snail. Right? But you, the shell breaks. And that's your body. The shell is your body. Well, we got to leave the shell because it's dangerous to be in a broken shell. Right? So you will take, you leave yourself out of the shell, you go find a new one. Sometimes that new one is just the spiritual body. It's the same thing. It's the circle of life. You cannot be scared or be scared forever. Right? You have to acknowledge it. And that's what the Spirit is telling me. For some of you guys who signed up to be here at this moment, and for some of you guys, a lot of you are here to be the reason why the world extends beyond the next ascension level, which is why my Spirit guides are telling me to get moving on the ascension process, because you guys need to have the knowledge and understanding so that when this time comes, whenever this is for you, you can be prepared and prepped for it, so that when the time comes, you are 100% ready. Right? And then we have here the world. Right? How does the solar storm or solar flare affect our technology and what power can it do? You know how I said it opened up the veil? Well, 100%. You see it right here. Right here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the, the earth. You see how half is in darkness? It's going to do a blackout. We're going to get a blackout. Right, you can kind of see that happening already. It's starting to go. But look who's waiting here. Go to the spiritual world. The world. We're going to start to reach the ascension process. Right? I feel like for some of you guys, you're like, I didn't really want this. Or I didn't know this is what was expected. It's going to happen eventually. We just have to allow our, our ability to understand that at a deeper cut continuity level, right? My job here is just to help you and ease the process and get you enough awareness so that when it does happen, you are 100% prepared, right? But I can only do so much. I can only release the videos. You have to do your part and watch these videos because everything is connected internally, right? Just because you see something that might not interest you, there's a reason why the video's up, always, right? So always pay attention. I promise you, everything is connected. Will we ever experience a worldwide blackout? Yes. If so, how long? Let's find out. Will we experience a worldwide blackout? I mean, how long would a worldwide blackout be after a solar storm or a solar flare occurred on Earth? I basically heard forever. The lover's card. What I'm seeing here, the reason why we're having what we're having, because what this is referring to is, it almost feels like in some way that we're going to understand, oh, we're too reliant on technology, we're too reliant on everything, and we're not having evolution be one of the driving forces. Think about it. We are one of the weakest predators. Right? That's what we are. One of the weakest predators that have ever walked this earth. Yet mentally, intellectually, we are the strongest. But it comes with an evolutionary disadvantage. It's us. Because think about it, for example, if there was uh, animals were evolutionized and adapted to environmental changes, we humans are not adapting to those environmental changes, right? Well, it's, we're advancing and we're creating technology that allows us to do those things, to advance. But if you were to strip us away from every single thing that we have ever created that protected us. What do you have? You have no protection. You are nothing without your devices. You are nothing without what you created. And so what it really allows us to do, really, in essence, is going to allow us to bring us back to that moment of feeling naked. It's going to bring us back to that moment of feeling like, oh, we really are nothing, that we didn't have the power that we thought we once had, as a society, so to speak. But if you were to take every single thing that humans created and bring them up and put them up against every other predator, every other animal on this earth, humans will be linked as one of the weakest and the least evolutionary advanced species that ever evolved on this earth. 
And that is because our technology limits us our ability to be able to evolve forward. Right? If you want to survive as a species, scientifically speaking, you need to evolve and adapt to environmental changes. We are doing neither. However, there are human species now in like um, islands or stuff like that, that who are now becoming semi-aquatic humans, who will now have the ability to have web feet, feet, feet and hands, who is able to swim at a higher rate than regular average terrestrial humans, and they also to be able to breathe on the water for 12 minutes. What makes it 10 times more unique, though, is that humans are no longer going to be considered mermaids, right? You know how they always say fish scales or whatever? No. Humans are not going to become fish. They're not going to become mermaids. They're going to become something very similar to like a beluga whale. But they won't ever look like a normal human. And you will never know that they are exactly almost the uh, evolutionary aspect of a human. The only thing is that allows us to understand evolution as it is, is that you will have to take a terrestrial human and you have to compare them to a modern day semi-aquatic human. We don't have mermaids. They will never exist. I even read on this. They will not exist. However, there will be something similar to it that is not the way that we depicted it, if that makes any sense. Right? And so, we're asking how long is it going to be? It's pretty much forever. That is because it, this is a lesson for us to learn that we are environmentally naked because of our lack of evolution, really. Okay, what, the next question is, what kind of power can a solar storm wield against our current weather pattern? Could it be powerful enough to reverse our poles? Let's take a look. Let's actually do this. We're going to use Earth magic. Find out what Earth has to say. Spirit saying, so Tommy, what kind of power can a solar storm wield against our current weather patterns? Could it be powerful enough to reverse the poles? Everything that's going on right now when it comes to the solar storm and the being naked and, you know, lack of proper evolution, we are having what's known as a rebirth, so to speak. So this is going to be almost like we are going to be able to have a reset where we're going to be able to try one more time, have another chance at this properly. The first thing is, we're asking, what kind of power can a solar storm wield against our current solar system, our current weather pattern? Now, if you want to get more of the natural aspect of what's going to happen, I did do a video on it. I will put that in the link description below, or you can see it up on the screen right now and just cut that, or I put it at the end of the video, and it will be one of those suggested videos. So you should definitely watch if you want more of the, uh, the actual scientific, natural disaster aspect. This is just whatever information Spiel just wants to give me on today's topic when it comes to internet blackout solar flares or solar storms, and of course, God. Right? Okay, so we have to, we have the cave, the sanctuary, right? What kind of power can a solar storm wield when it comes to environmental changes? Sanctuary. It's telling me the way that we live, we're going to enter back in this time period again. We're going to go back to the way things were before we had technology. This has happened before. Look back to the Greek, look back to the Egyptian. They have done it before. They had the technology that we have today. They had MacBook computers in Greek. I'm not kidding, they actually did. So the thing is here that we will enter back in the same time period. We're starting again. Time will restart itself once again. Right? Because we have here Gaia nurturing. When this large combustion of energy hits Earth, but I'm talking about the largest solar storm that there is, yes. It's going to bring forth healing energy. Healing energy to Mother Nature. It's going to heal her in a way that we have never seen before. Look at all those animals riding on her back. 
right? What it's telling me here is that as this electrical magnetic pole brings forth its front to the surface, and all these animals are in the back riding with them, it's almost like Noah's Ark, right? It's bringing all these animals back into existence, re evolving how they originally formed. Right? What this feels like is going to bring us back to the time period where the depiction in the Bible of Adam and Eve, when everything looked the way it would have looked under the dinosaur's time period, where it was like uh, beautiful water, water, nothing was polluted, stuff like that. We're going to experience that one more time. Right? Under here, we have mountain strength, right? We will be weakened. We will become the prey. You're going to ask yourself, why are we going to become the prey? Because evolutionary traits were never advanced in us. And so when you become the prey, you become more evolutionary advanced because you need to learn to have technology and traits that allows you to protect yourself. You know what I mean? So that is one of the things that's going to happen. That humans are no longer going to become the predator. They will now become the prey. And there will be a new predator, a new person at the top of the chain, right? Under here, we have reflection, winter solace, reflection. We have one more shot, is what this is talking about. One more shot. However, however, this reality that we're going to be in right here, this is where we're in right now. We are going to have more tactile animals being that they will not be aggressive. They will not try to hurt you. They won't try to kill you unless they're hungry. Right? Humans kill. Or the, the only species that kill for fun. That's it. Humans are the only species that do it. Animals in nature are going to be tactile. So when I say prey, you are prey when, you are, when they are hungry. Not when they just want to have fun. That's a human trait who thinks somehow that's normal, that it should be accepted, and you should just go kill an animal just because you feel like, you know what, that'd be fun. That's like a serial killer saying, you know what, let me go kill some humans. That sounds fun today, right? A little a little whacking in the head, right? They both have mental illnesses in terms of that aspect, but we see them two very differently when it comes to perspective, but they're really the same individual. They just kill different things, right? We have here underneath here, we underneath the guy and nurture and celebration. A lot of you guys are not going to be celebrating. A lot of you guys are going to be put in this predicament where you're going to be like, oh, like, why did it got to happen to me? Like, why I got to be born? Like, you just don't understand the process of why it's actually going on and why it's actually occurring. So you lack proper knowledge to understand your current world and current reality. You expect things to just be easy and the world just to be fun and good. But the, everything was just, for example, if you were to have a world where everything was just peaceful, everything was just to be fun and good, you would not grow. You would just become loopy. You would become ill-equipped. You would become basically water. Because there's, no there's no reason for you to think. There's no reason for you to have consciousness. If everything around you is not going to hurt you, right? There needs to be an equal balance, an equilibrium here, right? That's why the celebration of card is here. Because spirit is telling you to dance, celebrate. But be careful how you do it because when you do dancing, it's kind of ritual. When we have rituals that could be very problematic, right? But underneath the strength card here, we have the spring equinox, which is a rebirth. What is going on here is that you are going to reborn yourself. You are going to be reborn. But you know how, like, even in the Bible, they talk about a, re a rebirth, a, a reformation, almost like a second chance? What I'm getting from spirit here is that it's not necessarily the way the Bible depicts it. But what's going on here that you are going to have a second chance as a species, right? So what kind of power will the solar storm have? It has enough power to bring us back to the days before technology and pollution and industrial revolution destroyed our planet. Will bring us back to the caveman ages when we appreciated animals, we saw them as art, when we appreciated things around us, having food, having water, having people around us, surviving. So that's one thing was simple. It's going to bring us back to those simple times before things started to get crazy and things started to become civilized and stuff like that, right? The, the challenge here is tsunami. Wake up call. 
this guy comes up here as a wake-up call. This is telling you here that what is happening, this is going to happen if we refuse to acknowledge what is occurring, going on and what is occurring. This should all be avoided if we just understand what is happening, right? My main channel, my main purpose of the channel was to bring understanding and awareness to things that other people don't talk about so that when the time comes, you are prepared, right? That is the difference between my channel and other people's channels, right? So the next thing is that we talk about the poll reversal. The polls are going to probably reverse. And I'm going to look at that right now. Let's take a look at the poll reverse. I want to use energy here. Spirit saying those timing are the polls going to reverse. It's a solar storm effect going to reverse the you the pole. The earth, I, okay, excuse me. Is solar storm the solar flares going to reverse the earth's magnetic pole, the north and south? Okay, so I am very nasally today. We have here a reverse woman holding a coin. And we have a man holding the coin. Interesting. Okay, so it's interesting that these two cards came up. We have the north. And then we have the south. It's reverse. Right? The cards were both reverse. They will flip. Right? Because this, what did this look like to you? This is the south. And this is the north. The north is rich. The south is rich in soil. It's going to reverse. This becomes the North, this becomes the South. You're already seeing it already in America, right? The people who are really rich, the Industrial Revolution is bringing, it's gonna be swept across the South. But the Northern regions are gonna become rural, right? You're seeing that already. So look at America when it comes to the polar reversal that's already occurring, even at a, at a migrational level, when it comes to human migrating. So it's already happening, yes. It's going to be the one that triggers them. Is it possible that the solar storms could help Earth in its ascension process and provide us with enough energy to propel us higher? Right? We basically got the an answer for that, but let's just ask. We're going to ask beyond Lemuria. We're going to ask about that. Okay, Spirit Angels tell me, is it possible that solar storms could help us in our Earth's ascension process and provide us with enough energy to propel us higher? Is it possible, Spirit Saints, that solar storm could help Earth in the ascension process and provide us with enough energy to propel us higher? They told me to take the first two cards. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the first card that came out we had was Beyond the Mind. Look at that. Third eye here, and look at all that ascension process, her throat, her third eye, her crown, her ascension process. Is it possible that the solar storm could help us in our ascension process and provide us with enough energy to propel us forward? Yes. So right now, if you look here, you see here, we see a 20, right? We see the 20, right? And this card here, we have 35. 20, 35 will be when we complete that cycle. We also have here is we are lumin luminescent, like right? glowing. But you know how I said when that uh, energy combustion goes on to us, our aura, people who couldn't see aura before will start to see aura that we will start to glow. We'll start to become luminescent, right? That's what this is referring to. 
But, you know, I even talk about alien. I mean, not alien. I talk about mermaids, right? We have fish skin. We're going to start to evolve. And we're going, because of that, we're not only going to have high consciousness, we're going to become an evolutionary species that had always a, I almost, because of this moment, it was a defining factor that made all the difference from a species of human to a very vulnerable without the devices to a species that is very protective, who is protected, so, so to speak, right? Which is why we have that here. But these new species of humans communicate with the heart. So you will be able to feel what someone is thinking. You're able to connect energetically through the heart. You're able to heal what you love which is one of the new abilities that we're going to acquire. One of the most interesting aspects is that we're also going to be semi-aquatic, so we're going to be both terrestrial and both land. What I'm seeing here is that we're going to have brand new skin color. Skin color like we have today is no longer going to be needed. We're going to have green or bluish skin, very similar to the way that this is depicted. We will start to look more like the movie Avatar than we do with modern-day humans. That's what we're becoming. That's what our new evolutionary strain is going to become. Right? Whether this is artificial genetic mutation that we as humans are able to create, or it's very simple that we could have evolved with our ancestral traits and have brought back through the age of evolution for humans. Right? Look at this. Look at this beyond the, the mind here. Look what's at the top. The first one I saw was Egypt. Right, Egypt, Egyptian, right? Why do you think Egyptian people have their skulls look entirely different than our modern day humans? Because they already been through the entire process that we are going through now. They have the technology to do it. We have the technology today. So we are very well capable of the same exact thing with the same exact fate. The thing is what we choose to do with our fate. But we have the greatest responsibility to do something with it, but do it in the right way. Right? Under here, we have it, the sh surrender, right? Surrender to the unknown. Surrender and understand and accept that there are greater forces at play that are here to help you with your ascension process. Allow and understand that these solar flares, this solar storm, is allowing us to have the energy, the convention to allow it to extend to a higher realm, to a higher dimensional state of mind. Right? If so, what effect will it have us on all of, all of us, including our future? Right? Let's take a look at that. What kind of effect will this have, solar storm? through our ascension process, have on all of us as a society, as a collective, in our future. I just want to say not all of us are going to be lucky and fortunate enough to live through this. I know I probably will not ever witness this. But it's going to be a couple centuries, maybe a couple thousand years from now. But this could very well happen during us tomorrow. It is unknown in terms of this time period when it's going to come. When it comes, it comes at the time that it's supposed to. We have here is we have the reverse. She is the lotus, right? We are the son and daughter of Earth. We are not. We come from a different planet. And that's when we're going to start to realize that we were the aliens all along that we were the one that we were looking for, but we were the aliens all along. But when that happens, we are now going to understand how to build the realm and open up the veil once again. The Native American did this before, where we will once again open up the realm. We will create that barrier between the physical world and the spiritual world, and we will be able to bring them in and out through a portal, an opening dimension. Lastly, but not the least, we have the crown chakra, which is the unlimited self. What you think, what you create, will be manifested. Look at that. Doesn't that look like an alien eye right here? With his face and nose and whatever. But it also looks like a candle flame. The thing is that when you have the crown chakra, which is all about your understanding, 
that you will now start to realize that there is no limitation to what you can and cannot do. Right? We can become one of the most advanced species to have ever existed, and it will make us, our current human species, the most improbable, most dis- disgraceful and acid species that have ever walked this earth. But our you know our descendants that will come after us will become one of the most highly advanced civilizations that have ever walked this earth. It will make us look like cavemen. That's the difference. Is that we have a whole brand new evolutionary path that is more positive, more uplifted, more hopeful than the one that we're currently in now. Right? And lastly, but not least, we want to talk about what about God? I asked my guys, what does God mean? And let me tell you what they told me. Let me move this on. Can I ask, what does God mean? Geomagnetic field. Opening dimension. God means geomagnetic field. Opening dimension. What does solar flares have that it's able to do? When the solar flare is able to bring that combustion of energy into our Earth's electromagnetic, electro-geomagnetic field, it would open up a dimension. And that is our, it, today is our video about why solar flares are the portal to the veil. I hope you guys liked today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Let me know in the comment section below what you do think of today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. We're going to do our next video probably in a couple of weeks about God. But other than that, I hope you have a very beautiful day, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.